Hello guys, welcome back to Jellyfish Gamer 25. It has been a while. I apologise, guys. You haven't had a view for some time. Um, that has been similar to Goose. There's been quite a few issues. Not so much technically for my side. It's just workload. Um, so this is obviously my hobby. Uh, it's not a job. <laughs> Wish it was. Um, so I haven't had as much time to uh, get this out to you, but I have been hobbying. Um, there is quite a lot to catch up on, guys. So without further ado, I'll show you what I've done in terms of painting. Um, what I've got up to next, and because Goose has done it, we're going to have a, an unboxing, an unboxing on the channel. Um, so uh, I won't spoil it for you though. I'll let you see what we've got, and I'll be back soon. Okay, guys. So as I said, I have been away a little while, but I haven't not been hobbying. <laughs> Um, what I did work on, so I was away, I, I did go on a little trip to Portsmouth and that did give me some time to sit and get along with the Forge Bane set. So I managed to get this Tech Priest Dominus done, which I'm quite proud of. Uh, I think, is that the Volkite Blaster? Anyway, I've gone for a slightly different colour scheme for him. Uh, yeah, I'm quite proud of how he's come out. Um, you know, he's got a nice, well, it's really easy to paint as well, just using the, the, the standard lead belt to spray and then a wash, give it a slight purple wash just to give it like a bit of a, an odd tinge to him, um, as well as then giving him obviously the black wash and just really just tidying up a little bits and pieces here and there. So I'm really happy with how our Tepris Dominus came out. I then moved on to the Skatari. So the Skatari had really good fun painting these guys, putting them together. I went the Taser Goad because why not? Why not? So I've got these guys done, re again, relatively quickly. It was a very straightforward paint job. I mean, if I'm absolutely honest, it was just a, it's, well, silver and red, really. <laughs> that's the that's the option that uh, Autistic Jedi asked me to paint his new Skatari as. Uh, so these guys all got done quite nicely. I did do all the uh, different weapons, so the uh, Plasma Caliber, as well as the Arc Rifle, which I think just looks absolutely awesome. Mainly because I didn't know what weapon did what, so I was just like, do you know what, I'll just do them all. And then the Transianic Arcubus, which I'm just going to not pick up because I've just had to glue it back down. So this is more of a sniper one. Um, I appreciate that, you know, it's probably not the best of ways to do that, and she's probably best off having, say, three Transianic Arcubuses, because these guns are range 30, and that's obviously a sniper. But do you know what, as me and Goose have always said on this channel, we're always about the narrative, the theme, and you know, I, I liked, I just wanted to do everything to get these guys done. So, I have been hobbying, I have got these guys done, I haven't disappeared into the ether, I promise I have been doing stuff. Okay guys, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go in to an unboxing for you, so let's see what happens now. Okay guys, so we thought we'd do an unboxing on this channel, we thought we'd do an unboxing for... You'll have to bear with me because I did have to open this box, it was phenomenal. It is Grendel Grendelson. This is the squat dwarf, dwarf, space dwarf, bounty hunter for Necromunda. So that's right, you'll sit on Goose's channel that me and Goose are both doing, ne well, say both of us. I managed to convince him into Necromunda. So I've had to open it. I apologise, guys. It's not quite as a swath as me doing it, the old one-handed unboxing. But I just, I just, there's no way I could have opened this one. So I've not looked at the minutes yet, so it will be new for all of us. Well, now we see his back. We'll see his back together. Wow, that is detailed. I know it's just the back, guys, but... Scroll. Oh, wow, that's lovely. That is... Oh, man. G-Dub, I would love you to do these as a race. As a human auxiliary for the Imperial Guard. Just just so I could have a squad of them. A squad of squads. Doesn't have to be an army. But, you know, I'm happy with that. Pretty sure I could just uh, paint some up, but... Oh, wow. That is detailed. I mean, Jesus. Wow. Uh, we've also got in here, looks like his weapons. What's he going on with? Oh, it's a bolter. Well, yeah, obviously, we saw that in the start. Oh, quite a nice little dwarf, dwarf symbol on the back there. Very similar to the old Warhammer Fantasy symbolisms. And there's a power hammer. Got a dwarf with a hammer. That is lovely. Games Workshop 2018 Limited. It's really nice. No no air castings or damage. Looks like we've got a base in there as well. And then, oops. Just because I had to pull it out. So it looks like, oops, I may have crushed this a little bit. Sorry, guys. Grendel, Gren Grendel Grendelson. Wow. It's a little bit of backstory for Grendel Grendelson. Uh, is this about using hired guns? 
Oh yeah, and there's a little bit of a put together as well. Includes sample profile inside, which we have here. So let's have a look at his profile. So, oh wow, he is movement three, so he's not the fastest, as you expect with being a squat dwarf. Uh, weapon skill three, not bad. Ballistic skill four, strength three, toughness four, four wounds. Oh, he can take some hits. Initiative five plus, attacks one, leadership five, cool checks seven, will five, intelligence five. Uh, but he has bolt gun. After fire one, it's not bad. Power hammer, plus one to his strength, so he'll be strength four when he's hitting with his hammer. Uh, he has frag grenades, and he has combat master, iron jaw, and nerves of steel. Armored undersuit and flak armor. Nice. 280 credits, so you will see this guy roll out. So I do have gore half one as well, so hopefully, you know, you might even see a bounty hunter warband at some point in the future. So. That is our unboxing for Grendel Grendelson, the bounty hunter, guys. I hope you look forward to seeing him soon. Uh, I've got to obviously clean him up and give them a nice little uh, wash to get rid of any of the, uh, any of the residue, mold release residue. But yeah, so I'm really impressed with that now, guys. All right then. Now, not to be outdone by Gooseman, we're going to do a second unboxing. That's right, folks, we're going straight in to a second unboxing. So bear with me while I set up and we'll be back. Okay guys, are you ready for our second unboxing? So our second unboxing is Citadel Bases. That's right, Goose. Two unboxings on the channel. I mean, I know you guys were excited when I said there'd be a second unboxing on the channel, but two bases, a set of bases. Oh, oh, we're losing it. There we go. Hmm. Oh, well, I can't get that open with one hand, but there we go. Maybe I shouldn't. So there we go, guys. We have <laughs> Warhammer Bases as our Unboxing that I didn't unbox anything because I couldn't open it with one hand. <laughs> I'm only joking, guys. Let's go to the real second unboxing. Here he is, guys. The man. The hour. It's Sly Marbo. So, I was only joking around with that second unboxing. I wasn't really going to give you the uh, <laughs> the basics as an unboxing. Oh, no. It's the one-handed unbox. Oh, Goose. You'll be happy with this. Oh, there we go. Here he comes. Oh. Can I, can I, can I do this one-handed? Camera's going around everywhere. You guys are probably being emotionally sick at the moment. If you're not, then you're just weird. Or an orc. Let's be an orc. Like goose. Here we go. So, pop open. Slime Arbo. At the request of my uh, darling brother, who got this miniature for. Oh, there's, there he is. He's in there. And there we have. Slimey's rules, by the look of it. Yep, it's an empty box. I'm sure, great content for you guys there. So let's get this mini open and let's have a look at Sly Marbo. Aha! The world one handed. Put together. Okay. So we have his miniature here. Oh wow. Wow, that is detailed. Cigarette in slice, cigar, sorry, cigar in Sly's mouth as well. Cigar in Sly's mouth. That ripper gun looks great. Nice knife. Looks like we've got some scenic base work, is it? Oh yes, goose man. Just what you need to see. That looks like an orc head. It is an orc head. Smashed in orc head. A nice little scenic base for him. Killer plant from the, the jungle world. Dead orc head as well. We've got uh, obviously his base is in there too. Interesting, that's a 32 mil base. Hmm. That. And here he is, the man of the hour. Slime Arbor. Oh wow, what's, what's this? So we have Oh wow guys, look at that. I wasn't expecting a little bit of artwork in there, but there we go. Slime Arbo artwork. <laughs> a little background of Sly, who he is. Natural born survivor. Wow, I'm really looking forward to getting this guy painted up. I think, you know, he may even come down to the hives of Necromunda Goose. I think, you know, maybe some Catachans using all that rules may come down, do some damage. But here is his rules. This is Sly's rules. So what have we got for Sly? He's twos to hit. Yeah, let's uh, try to get the English version as well, because uh, I can't read other languages. So I'm sorry. That's just my failing. So. Sly's movement is six, weapon skill two, bliss skill two, three, three, four, four wounds, four attacks, seven leadership, five plus save. 
This guy's Rift Pistol, Frag Grenades, and Envenom Blade. Rift Pistol is it's not too bad. Wounds Infantry on twos. Uh, the Envenom Blade wounds Infantry on twos. Plus one to his strength, so his strength four. That's not bad. He's got Frag Grenades. He's a loner. Officers cannot issue orders to Sly. Sly can never have the wall have a warlord trait. He's got lethal ambush special rules. So during deployment, you can set Sly up in ambush instead of placing him on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phase, he can emerge from hiding and set up anywhere on the battlefield. That is more than nine inches away from anywhere else. Sly can do more than one of the following. So we can either start with his blade, which he can move up to D6 inches in any direction. In addition to the next turn, next turn, add two to Sly's attacks. That's quite good. So Sly can sort of get in there, get quickly, and then charge in. Uh, he's got snipe with a pistol, so he can use his ripper pistol. Looks like he can shoot into so somehow we can target enemy characters. That's that's pretty good. So he can immediately shoot his pistol as if it were the shooting vest. So effectively, you're going to be looking at shooting twice from three shots, strength five, winning on twos. That well, might be quite good if you've got some, you know, psyche you want to knock out or something. Uh, detonate concealed explosive. Pick an enemy unit on the battlefield. Roll a d6. Subtract one from the unit if it's a character. Okay, fair enough but add one to the unit if it contains 10 or more models. On a 4+, plus, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, but on a 7+, plus, it suffers D6 mortal wounds. Even better. Just what we want to see, guys. Uh, one with his surroundings. He can add two to his cover saves, kind of like scouts. And then once per battle, it looks like Sly can... Oh, so he can disappear and then reappear using the lethal ambush ability. Now that is pretty cool. He's only four power, so I'm looking forward to using Sly in a battle. I think he's going to be pretty pretty nice, actually. I'm not going to lie. I'm looking very much looking forward to using Sly. Um, yeah, Goose, watch out. Sly Marbo's coming. Okay, guys, so that's our second unboxing. And I'll go back to a little overview from myself. So, guys, just as a final update, this is what I'm working on this week. So I am working on my Knight Armagers. So that's right. I've got these guys built up. I didn't manage to get them painted while I was away. But I have got them washed. Um, it's just the case now of starting to do the paint, starting to do some dry brushing, and really get these guys done <laughs> for, for you on the channel. So uh, they shouldn't, I'm hoping they won't take too much longer. Um, but yeah, so I'll get these guys all painted up. They're really nice kits. I'll get the bases done, and then you will see them on the channel. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. So that's right, there were two unboxings and one where I was faffing around with a bag. So <laughs> a little bit different. Um, so myself and Goose did get our game um, sorted, just as an update of yourselves. We did have that game. Um, it has taken a while to get that sorted because we've had to transfer files. And it, it's quite tricky because obviously neither of us are professionals doing this. We're not mini wargaming. We're not, you know, Gorilla Miniatures or any of those. We're, do, we're just two guys that just like to have good games and good fun. Um, so we will get those videos out to you. I'm going to do some editing as you guys are probably watching this. Um, but yeah, so... We, you know, slowly getting there. Thank you for all your subscribers to the channel, uh, to Tom, um, who gave me an absolutely fantastic game. So as an update to what I managed to get done, so I had a, a, a game with uh, Tom Mitchell, who's a friend of mine. Um, I've got some pictures of our game popping up now. Hope you don't mind, Tom, but your Mortarion is beautiful. So it was my uh, Necrons versus Tom's Death Guard, and I got smashed. It was my first time running the Necrons with the new Codex not played new death guard before and my god they are resilient i mean you think necrons are resilient but these guys were just brilliant i couldn't fault tom at all he's a great player to play against i've never played against mortarion i now know to shoot the hell out of him before he gets anywhere near me <laughs> 10 praetorians versus mortarion yeah, it didn't go as well as i'd hoped man of the match from me was my c-tan who did quite a bit of damage with his uh, with the C-Tan powers, I love the new uh, command points and using some of the extra um, rolls and, and, and stuff that I could get out there. It was really good fun. It was a really good game. Very much enjoyed that. And as you may have heard on a, another channel, uh, a reputable channel, I must say, I also had a game of Necromunda. So I've got a, one or two pictures. Shall I pop up now? So I had a, a, a good game with Goose. Um, yeah, I played the Eshes, he played the Goliaths, and uh, he made me uh, feel for it. Yeah, that, that grenade launch on those Goliaths is nasty, especially with knockback. He knocked my leader off the building, uh, which then she was pinned, and then she actually failed her bottle check. It was a double one, wasn't it, Goose? Uh, sorry, a cool check, because uh, I'd um, needed to test to make sure, you know, my guys were around me doing bottle. 
Um, and she failed the double one, and then everyone ran off. Gore was left. Gore half home was in that crew. Um, Gore may have killed himself by overloading. I didn't need to overload my plasma pistol. I just went, ah, I wonder if it says deadly in this as it is an eighth. Yes. Yes, it is. It absolutely bit me in the butt. Yeah, I, yeah well, <laughs> live and learn, don't you? Um, so yeah, so Necromunda's coming to the channel. I know Goose is keen that we bring that to you because it is quite easy and we got a game in relatively quickly. I'm looking around because I will be bringing to you... Uh, obviously, we've got my Eshes and Goliaths are all painted up and ready to go. But we will be playing... Uh, well, I'll be painting up alongside a Cultist Warband. So the rules are in White Dwarf, uh, White Dwarf only. But we'll be doing a Chaos Cultist Warband because I've got the old Dark Millennium... Was it Dark Millennium? You guys will know. Box set where you get the Cultists in... Um, and I still got all those just ready to be painted up. So I said, thought, why not? You know, the fact that my one of my leaders can turn into a spawn and be a great big hunkering monster. Um, yeah, it's it sounds nasty and sounds great. Um, so hopefully you guys will see a lot more on the channel soon. Um, I am doing some painting here, there, and everywhere, as I may have shown you. I may have. I will have shown you. Um, we are still doing the orcs and the last wall. Uh, Goose is waiting because he well there is the assumption that it may be orcs coming out for june maybe maybe well june maybe next month i'm not so sure now because i think we still got the knights codex to come haven't we so i wonder if we will possibly see orcs in christmas time but i'm not sure yet so we'll we'll, we'll see you know when you times you've watched this it's probably been announced and now it's completely wrong and they decided to get rid of orcs from the race that's right you heard it here Orcs are going. 40k. No more orcs. Sorry, everyone. They'll only be gone. <laughs> That's a joke for any of you that watch our Stellaris campaign, uh, which myself and British Shrimp play. Um, yeah, so I'm only messing, guys. I don't know what's going on. Um, we'll see what happens with the orcs. So, hopefully you guys see that soon. And just to give you another update, guys, you'll probably see a game of The Hobbit on the channel soon. So I'm going to do a game... Uh, with the Hobbit, because um, I know some of you out there are fans of the Hobbit, um, and it is a good game. I've played it for many, many years, many years. But we'll, we'll leave that for another video because this is already quite a long video, and I appreciate you staying with me. So I will see you soon, guys, and thank you for joining us.